Welcome to Electron Line and our next series in astronomy is going, to about the, is going to be about the life cycle of stars and we're going to start with the low mass stars. Now low mass stars doesn't mean that they're all very small stars, they're the average size stars in the universe among which our Sun is one of them. Our Sun is basically just an average size star. There's many that are smaller, many that are larger. There's a particular class of stars, the very large stars that have a very different life cycle and we get to that at, in a different series. So now we're going to talk about the stars that comprise pretty well about 99.9% .9 of all the stars in the universe. We began to get a feel or an understanding of the stars going through a different life cycle because of the advent of the HR diagram. When we started putting together the HR diagram we began to realize that stars have a very specific sequence in which they exist. One of them was what we call the main sequence, where most of the stars the universe are currently are at. And the main sequence is the main stage of, a life, of the life cycle of a star. But there are earlier stages to the main sequence, and there are later stages of the main sequence. And by putting together the HR diagram, we began to realize that. For example, before a star becomes a main sequence star, it goes through a development stage, a protostar stage, where we go from the very beginning, how stars are formed, and finally end up on the main sequence. Again, it's not a physical trip that they take, but it's a, it's a trip through the evolution of their being. And so as stars began to fuse uh, hydrogen into helium in their core, they, began, they, be, they became what we call main sequence stars, and those, that is the stage of a star that it spends most of its life on. But eventually, that stage ends, and stars then became what we call red giants, and then finally, most of these stars would end up as white dwarfs. Only a very small percentage of the stars do not end up as white dwarfs. And of course, white dwarfs would slowly fade away into the eternity and would fade away from view as the stars and slowly would cool and disappear. So we understood, based upon the HR diagram, that the main sequence was where stars would spend most of their life, that bigger stars that are hotter would be up on this side of the main sequence and smaller stars that are cooler would be on this side of the main sequence so these were small red, red stars here would be, the, would be yellow stars like the Sun and over here would be the very large white and blue stars also the luminosity of stars would depend upon their mass very large stars have very large luminosities compared to the Sun being one maybe a thousand or ten thousand times the luminosity of the Sun and very small stars had just a small fraction of the luminosity of the Sun so we realized that stars went through stages and through the study of of stars and through various methods we began to have a fairly good understanding what the life cycle star of stars are at there was one more thing that we discovered when we started looking at the HR diagram is when we put clusters of stars on the, on the HR diagram. For example, we'd look at a globular cluster and knowing that those stars all started or were formed at about the same time, by placing the st those stars on the HR diagram, we found something very interesting. In our next video, we're going to explore that to get a better understanding of what that is all about. So the HR diagram was really the start of our understanding of stars and the fact that they had a life cycle that they would change through their, uh, had a changing process through which they went and how they started in a certain way and ended up in a certain way. Let's go to our next video where we will learn about how taking globular clusters and putting those stars on the HR diagram that really told us a really good story about what the formation of stars was and how stars would end up going through their end life cycle.